cost of living surveys, seeking the most effective way for staff to fill out the survey form and to increase their understanding of the operational rules, etc. So uh, the session is about the salaries uh, of professional staff and higher categories, categories uh, according to the UN system. Uh, this session will be presented by uh, Tanya, who is the uh, president of the FIXA, and by Andrea, who is the chair of the PSA standing committee. Before starting the presentation, I kindly ask uh, all the participants to ensure that uh, they are muted and to raise their hands in case uh, you have asked, uh, you have question or comments either during the presentation or to wait until the end of presentation where we have a dedicated Q&A uh, part. You can also provide your question and comments through the chat option anytime, and we will go through them also at the end of the presentation. Uh, I will pass now the floor to today's panelists to shortly introduce uh, themselves, and we'll start with uh, Tanya. Unmute myself first. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I'm Tanya Quinn McGuire. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the president of the Federation of International Civil Servants Associations. Um, and yeah, that'll do for the moment. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah. Leo Linda. Yes, good afternoon. I am Leo Linda, um, Staff Association of UPU, and I am the third vice chair of the PSA committee. Thank you, Mino. This is your round. OK, thank you. Thank you, Osin. I'm Cosimo Melpignano. Mino, I'm the FIXA General Secretary. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mino. Andrea? <coughs> You're on mute, You're on Andrea. Muted. Hi, I'm Andrea Palazzi. I'm the PSA Standing Committee Chair. Good morning, good afternoon to everyone. We hope that you are going to have a nice interactive session. You see, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, so myself is Hussein Mahadpi. I'm uh, a nuclear safeguard inspector at the International Atomic Energy Agency, and I am a staff representative at the IA Staff Council since uh, 2016. And this is my second year as vice chair of the PSC uh, Standing Committee. I give now the floor to Tanya to start the presentation. Tanya. Okay. Thanks so much, Christine. Uh, Andrea, would you mind sharing the slides? Yes, I'm Thank doing you. it. Did you see the presentation? Uh, we do now. Thank you, Andrea. I'll move on. So thanks, as you can see, um, we're going to split the presentation between myself and the fixed president and Andrea, the chair of the um, PSA Standing Committee, the Professional Salaries and Allowances Standing Committee for the FIXA um, Council. And now we see the UN, okay, voila. Um, we're going to split it in two pieces. First of all, we're go I'm going to speak about what is the general structure, how the, the professional salaries are, are set within the UN system and it's it's quite specific to the UN. It's not um, not necessarily as you might expect it to be. So I would invite everybody to pay attention until perhaps the end of the presentation um, and it, note any questions you have. And if those questions have not been answered during the um, during the presentation, then we can answer them at the end if that's OK with everyone. Um, and then Andrea will go and um, move on to the post adjustment, the actual post adjustment, the PA. Um, the famous post adjustment and he'll explain how that process works and a, a little bit more about the technical process. Thanks, Andrea. Next slide. Thank you. So professional salaries in the UN are set according to what we call the Noble Mare principle. Um, so that means it's a principle that was adopted back in 1950. I can't remember what. Um, and that means that the UN common system should be able to uh, re attract and retain staff from all of the international civil services of all the all the um, UN member states, and that includes the highest paid civil service. Now that may or may not be um, our competitors, 
today, many of us think that perhaps it should also include um, private sectors, banking industries, uh, uh, academia, etc. But at the moment, this is basically where we are. Um, and that's been the standard principle for very many years, for decades now. And based on that, to ensure that, so when we hear member states say, but I'm an Irish civil servant and I don't get anything like your compensation package. What we do is we say, well, we have to apply the noble merit principle. So it's not according to the the, the the civil service in Nairobi or the civil service in Dublin or whatever. It's a, it's about the highest paid international civil service. And actually, and that's what we called call the comparator. So um, next slide, please. Andrea. So where the comparator comes into it is when we look at our base salary. We'll see in a minute that your salary, your actual take home pay is your base salary plus the post adjustment on top of it. But the base salary is the salary that all professionals get. And that is the concept of that was it was agreed on and introduced in 1990 by the General Assembly. And you can search the resolution as as it is. Um, on this on the screen and every five years or so there is a review of who the comparator is and um, which member state has the highest paid national civil service and so that they can be compared with the uh with the un so they have to be like similar size similar structure um at the moment and i was part of the last review of the comparator and at the moment and, and for as long as i can remember the united states has been the comparator civil service and we compare it to federal, the US federal civil service. Um, so they are the ones that we, we look at what their net, their average salary is, um, and that will be the basis for the UN professional salaries. And everything will be a lot, uh, according to that. So New York will have, New York will therefore be the base salary. They will have the same salary as the comparator. And then anything that's different, either it's up or it's down, will, will be taken into consideration by the post adjustment. If we go on to the next slide, please, Andrea. So as you can see, as, as you can see, um, your take on pay, what you see at the end of the day will be the base salary, which everybody gets. And then the post adjustment. I so, uh, uh, Somebody speaking. Um, so that will keep. You're muted. I think you're muted. I think you're muted. Somebody muted the when we're muting the attendees, don't mute the presenters as well. That would be great. Um, so let's just um, we'll pass. I'll pass the floor on the, to Andrea, who will explain a little bit about the post adjustment itself. Um, and then if there's any questions on the very basis, we'll come back at the end of the presentation. Thanks, Andrea. OK, what is the post adjustment? The post adjustment is a value that uh, uh, will make our salary somehow equal in terms of purchase power. What does it mean? Uh, we know that, as a sample, if you go to Geneva, it's really an expensive place. If you go to Italy, it's really somehow a cheaper place compared with Geneva. It could be that if you go to Paris, something in the middle. So for a sort of equity and a sort of equal pay in terms of professional, it's been established a process, and uh, this process is called post-adjustment. The post-adjustment is a multiplier that will be added to our salary that is going to give to us the overall salary if you want of our take on pay. So what does it mean? If I'm in Geneva, will be at my base salary, really just to put simple number. If my say base salary is 100 and the post adjustment is 80, it means that my salary become 180. If differently, the, I will be uh, in Italy and my salary is 100 and the post adjustment in Italy could be that is around 25, 30, 30%, my salary will become 130. All of this one somehow is, is again performed to have the same purchase power that is equivalent in any duty station, again in comparison of New York. Why this post-adjustment is so important? 
but it's, it's, it's so important because, again, we would like to be treated in equal way despite of the duty station. And this one is the only mechanism can, that can make our salary equal in the different, the different countries. In different countries, obviously, we have, as I mentioned before, different in terms of cost. When I mean cost means cost of living is not just, if you want, the values. There is could be difference in terms of monthly rental, difference in terms of charges, different in terms of expenses, or dif difference in terms of uh, health system, public versus private. And all these things have to be taken in consideration in the different duty station to have a post adjustment that will make us getting the same salary again, as Tanya was mentioning before, compared with the New York office that for us is a sort of reference. We always talk about post adjustment. What we call what we consider post adjustment is what is called a post adjustment multiplier. So it's what it is PAM. This value is uh, always changing, check, can often change even from one month to another one, depending by the fluctuation of the different currency. But what is really important that we have to start, it, what is what it is the post adjustment index? The post adjustment index is the value that is uh, decided normally every place to place survey and is an index in comparison again with the New York federal service salary. So if you're going to have New York that have a post adjustment Dixon, again, just to give you some simple number. As for example, in New York, we are going to have a post adjustment index that is 100. And uh, we are going to have a duty station that uh, the post adjustment index is 110. It means that the post adjustment multiplier must give a value that will represent this 10% difference. And this is the reason why the post adjustment index is that is something that almost we never we never see it because we normally get the pay slip where there is the post adjustment multiplier is really the key for our international professional salary. This post adjustment index cannot just be changed somehow every time. The post adjustment index normally just set once every five years, at least in the HQ session when we do the cost of living survey, or can would be changed every normally three years in the non HQ session where we do the cost of living survey more often. And this one is really the key, the understanding of the difference between post adjustment index, that is the value reference to get what will become our post adjustment multiplier. As I mentioned before, the purchasing power is uh, have to be practically maintained uh, during all life of our salary between the professional service. This is the PI. It's really an indicator that has been designed to create stability across region and across professional salary categories. Uh, this value somehow can uh, have to be considered that can be increased every year because of the CPI. What does it mean CPI? The CPI is what is called a cost price index. So normally every 12 months, all the professional salary duty station are performing what is called a CPI price assessment that are going and compare the cost from the previous year. In the case that the cost in terms of monthly rental, uh, utilities, um, medical service, uh, grocery, anything that can compile if you want your cost of living is going to increase or is going to decrease. Normally we never have a decrease, but uh, it means that uh, every February Normally, the CPI has been performed at the beginning of the month. I'm sorry if the phone is ringing. I cannot really close it. It's in a different room. So every single year around January, the CPI is performed by the ICSC. 
and in the different duty station. And normally we get uh, a salary difference directly in February. If uh, I can give a sample, um, a positive sample, take it in that way. Uh, there was the cost price index that has been performed, uh, as a sample, in Germany. Uh, I think that uh, the results have not been applied in February, have been applied in March. And even prior, the cost of living survey that has been performed in June this year, uh, the salary of the professional uh, employer in, Germ in, uh, in Bonn or in Germany in general have been increased of around 8.8%. Exactly because of this CPI that was showing that there was a huge increase of cost of living from the previous year to the next one. Something that you need to consider is uh, the different type of duty station, and uh, this one is more for the is, me is more for the cost of living uh, survey methodology, in the sense that uh, uh, we are divided in. Uh, we call, at least normally, we call HQ duty station. At the end, it is group one and group two duty station. Normally, group one duty station are HQ duty station. Group two duty station are non-HQ duty station. And uh, there are some, somehow, some differences, as a sample, in terms of cost of living survey. Normally, in HQ duty station, uh, the cost of living survey is performed every five years. When uh, in non HQ duty station, with the fact that they are based in uh, not, if you want, our currency, often are, have been performed every three years. Here, somehow, I already started before, I was summarizing the some of the difference. So the first one it is uh, that the, the frequency of the cost of living survey in the Group one is performed around every five years, when in the group two, between two and three years. The, obviously, the source of data, it is uh, ICC price survey that have been performed in both. This reference that is below is quite old, in the sense that this one is a reference on 2016, where the ICSC Commission went and get the pricings from the European Institute. So instead of uh, uh, really, instead when there is some out price survey, it means staff will be required to compile the cost of living survey and to provide data about cost of living, monthly rental expenses, how much we spend for medical, how much we spend for utilities, and even how much normally we spend if you want for uh, uh, furniture, even for car. Obviously, we pay the monthly rental every month, but we don't acquire a car every month. So in the cost of living survey structure to put the right weight in the different component. In addition to this one, the ICSC should be mandated on uh, collecting real price in the different duty station. So this normally should be done by people going around, even if uh, there was the possibility that they would like to use, if you want, external sources like price scribing or other things. But in theory, the mandate was that they have to go around and collect pricing. And this one somehow is really important. So we contribute on the, with the cost of living survey, but at the same time, ISCSC is still mandated to collect the pricing overall. The Housing index, if you want, of the cost of living survey, as I was mentioning before, for the HQ duty, st for the HQ duty station is, uh, or the group one duty station, as multiple subcomponent. Uh, right now it should be around seven, as written there. Uh, you have to consider when the group two duty station have a more simplified structure. At the end, even if in one case you have several, if you want, component, when in the one in the group to duty station, if you want, you don't have seven component. At the end, I may say that the information that they want to collect is barely similar. It's only that uh, structured wise, the skewed recession is more structured. But at the end, in terms of collection of prices, in both cases, they are going to collect the required information. The treatment, obviously, of uh, expenditure and uh, durable. Uh, in the HQ session, normally this means that they are collected in the area, in the sense that if I'm in Geneva, if I'm in Geneva, if I'm in Bonn, if I'm in 
uh, in room. Normally, they consider the price that are locally on the area. Uh, when uh, if uh, you are in the non executed session, they also consider expanded or that if you want out of the area. And this one is mainly because it could be that people would like to acquire things that could be cheaper from other places that in or even could be sometimes they don't even find what they would like to have in the duty session and they are just going to look for something outside. Uh, currency in terms of salary, uh, they you the professional salary of uh, the professional salary is based in US dollar. Uh, here is more when it's written currency of salary. Uh, one is the local currency, one is paid in US dollar is is in, in a different way in the sense that the in the cost of living survey with the fact that uh, the HQ duty station has something like an uh, R currency. Like the US dollar is an R currency, the euro is an R currency, and the and the the, the, the Swiss franc as a sample is an R currency. Whenever they establish the post adjustment of the post adjustment index, they try somehow to give you always the same salary in that currency. Like uh, uh, I don't know if I have if I'm in Geneva as a sample and uh, I have a salary of 100 and the post adjustment is 80. Uh, and we should get, as a sample, 180 Swiss franc per month for that, I don't know, P3, step three, whatever. Uh, it means that our post adjustment, even if the US dollar is going to fluctuate, should still give that amount in terms of resulting in, uh, in Swiss franc. Differently with the fact that in the non issue duty session, the currency is fluctuating somehow much more than uh, in the HQ to this session, they, they prefer somehow to fix the salary in a currency that is much more stable if you want than the local one. Oh, sorry. The, all of this is uh, somehow trying to stabilize our take on pay, as I tried to explain, if you want, in other words before, on uh, the R currency in the HQ duty session, when uh, differently in the in the non HQ duty session in Group Two, they will really try to stabilize our own pay in US dollar. That is a more stable value. Many, or I may say, all of this information can be found in the United's Post Adjustment System booklet. This one is really an helpful and useful uh, document provided by IACSC, and it's giving you all the information about the Post Adjustment System, the methodology, the operational rules uh, that will apply to the category of international professional, either if they are in the HU duty station and as well if they are in the non HQ duty station. The initial session is finished. Now it's time for question. Using the floor is again your. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Andrea, for uh, this really very clear and uh, useful presentation and the information provided. Um, now the floor is open for the Q&A uh, session. Question if uh, from the participants. I see already uh, one hand. Rising. Please go ahead. That we can stop the presentation. No. Yes. We have uh, several person. Start with uh, Ostrovsky Yuri. Yeah. Hi everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, there is a question I always wanted to know and never understood. Uh, about the post adjustment. Uh, for instance, my salary, let's say it's 100%, including base salary and post adjustment. The total is 100. From time to time, we receive a message that the uh, International Civil Service Committee Commission decided because of changes in inflation, uh, take uh, uh, to upgrade our post adjustment. So uh, my salary is 100, inflation becomes bigger, so I'm paid less. So Civil Service Commission decided to give me more money in post adjustment in order to keep my salary at 100. 
after all, everything's fine. But at the same time, Civil Service Commission take lower my base salary. So when my post adjustment go high, at the same time, they bring my base salary less. So I remain, my total salary remains 100, while inflation remains 110, for instance. So what did I get at the end? At the end, I get the same amount of money. Post adjustment is bigger, but base salary is lower. So where is the adjustment for me for inflation? I never understood how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not expressing myself clear, but the question is why inflation bring us to the same amount of salary, basically. Just structure of salary is different. Thank, thank you. Your question much. is very clear. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Tanya or Andrea. Do, do we want to take a, a couple of questions first and then come back? I know that there there were there was a question in the chat about inflation as well. Um, um, so maybe that will answer a few, but maybe you want to go to the next one or two questions so we can then answer them. Maybe that would be better. All right. Okay. Good, good, good. Thank right, you. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, um, I'm sorry, Hussein, could you just kindly ask our colleagues to let us know what organization they're they're calling from? Yeah. That would be helpful. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Second person, um, Skovic, Leo. Uh, good afternoon to the colleagues. Thank you to yes. the presenters. Uh, Leo Skobik from the. Sure, can you yeah, hear me? Please. Can, yes, yes. Can you please introduce shortly yourself from which organization and then uh, go ahead with your question? Thank sure, you. Sure, sure. So, Leo Skobic from uh, Universal Postal Union. Thank you. Technical account manager. And again, thank you to the presenters for this very kind presentation. Uh, my question is uh, very simple and basic, and it's something that uh, I think it, it was hinted on by the content of your presentation, is basically in your opinion or in your um, assessment, can we uh, expect here in Switzerland uh, an increase in the uh, post adjustment or the base salary for next year, judging from the current economic conditions? Thank you. <laughs> I don't have I, any I think more. that's the question. I wish I wish I had that crystal ball, Leo, but <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. I don't have any more um question from uh, the from the participant. I mean um, I'll uh, take the one from from, from Leo specifically. Um just to say that um Leo we can't tell what the increase will be next year. It really is taken mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. There's a slight, yeah. as um, I think um, our colleague uh, Mr. Ostrovsky um, noted, there is an adjustment every month because of inflation, ex currency exchange rate, um, but really the CPI is taken into account on a yearly basis. The inflation is on a yearly basis on um, a, in February. Um, from the consumer price index, and there's sort of a, a, a calculation made based on the um, CPI plus currency exchange rates over the year, and then you there will be um, an annual adjustment, um, normally around the month of February. Then um, a, after that, um, it's it's re, that's on a yearly basis. So normally around the month of February, you see that adjustment for inflation. Um, I hope that answers the question. I won't go into anything further on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank Leo, you so um, I wish I knew. <laughs> I wish I <laughs> no, knew whether no. you were going to get an increase or not. Um, if it were up to me, we'd all get increases, but sadly it's not. So there we go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, the, my, my comment was more geared towards something that, that happened before. I'm, I'm sorry to take up a little bit more time. It was geared towards something that happened uh, this year, where in, in spite of the inflation, uh, because of the change in the methodology in how uh, this uh, post percent post percent percentage was calculated. Uh, me personally, and I think a lot of us at the UPU actually had a decrease in our salary around four, almost four percent in our take home pay, even despite the inflation. So that that's why I was asking, uh, can you maybe uh, give a better estimate? But yeah, I understand you that in February we can expect uh, Okay. The next adjustment to take place. Are, are are you are you talking about locally recruited um, salaries or professional salaries? Professional professional salaries. Okay. All right. Because there's a big yeah. difference. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Liam. Thank you. Thanks. I have um, two more participant um, raising their hands uh, for question. Um, Ivan first. 
and uh, please introduce yourself, which organization you belong to, and uh, present your question. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for the for the great presentation. Uh, my question, I think, is a little bit about how do we actually see whether the salaries actually have gone down or gone gone up? Uh, when I look at my salary slip, not o not only can I see constants uh, of the the no, I work in Rome, therefore I'm paid in euros, right? So it's it's never the same. The dollar amount every month is very different, and also the euro amount every month is different. So we go a few hundred dollars up, a few hundred dollars down. So how can one possibly say? So even if I go back three years, right, the, 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 they go up and down so much that I cannot say whether or not my salary was went up or went down with the inflation and with the adjustment of the cost of living. So how can one even, let's say not verify, but just understand whether the salary did go up or whether they stayed the same or it went down? Yeah, thank I you. I hope I make sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay, I think this is one uh, I even this one I think what I was trying to mention before. Uh, the in the like room in the HQ duty station, our salary is somehow is based on the our currency of your duty station, means euro. Every every salary, if you want, every pay slip, you should practically convert your US dollar salary in euro. If you will do it in euro, you will notice that your salary, if you want, is uh, somehow is stable. Sometimes it's, you are going to get 20 euro more. Sometimes you are going to get could be 40 euro less. Exactly about your currency. And if there is an increase, you will see it there. This uh, uh, post adjustment multiplier is exactly if you want done in that regards. You need to have the same purchase power in your duty station. And unfortunately, the same purchase power in your duty station that it is a duty station where everything is valued in euro cannot really be done in US dollar. So if you really want to have an understanding where you, is your salary is going, you should perform every every salary slip, if you want, as you prefer. You should get that, with that salary slip and convert it in euro. In this way, you will understand if your salary is going up or down. Because unfortunately, the this currency fluctuation is the one that uh, if right now the US dollar is going down, it means that your post adjustment will go up and you're going to get could be more US dollar because I required more US dollar to acquire the same quantity of euro. The way around, if uh, the US dollar is get basically is getting increased, it means that you're going to get less US dollar because for the same amount of euro, I required less. This one is the, sim the simplest way that you can get if you, where your salary is going. You're well, muted. Sorry, Eva. sorry, yes, thanks, thanks. But no, this is how I also understood it. And I, when I looked, because it, the space slip also tells you the amount of euros as well. There is the dollar amount and there is the euro amount. And when I compare the euro amount, it goes up and down by 100, 200 across the months. And, yeah. I'm not, and I'm not the director general where these these differences should be that that much, right? Uh, with this, so I this is where I, I find it very complicated. What you're looking at is because there is a slight adjustment by the comparator by the U.S. Civil Service mm -hmm. for inflation per month. So there will be a slight inflation in, uh, adjustment because of that. And then, mm -hmm. as Andrea explained, there's also an adjustment because of the ex currency exchange rates. So that's why you're seeing that up and down and up and down. The whole point of the post adjustment is to ensure that you have the same purchasing power as our colleagues in New York. So um, slight increases and decreases will happen. Um, what I would suggest the best way to know is whether or not you're your salary uh, across the board has gone up or not would be to look at the um, on the ICSC and you have a salary scale for each duty station. And it's very clear from P1 to, to D2, um, it'll have all of those grades and um, and including the um, step increase, the step increases, etc. So um, you should be able to see when you go to the ICSC, you'll get a, your salary scale for that duty station. Now you can compare it then for the salary scale the previous year and the previous year and the previous year. I hope that helps, Ivan. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. I don't have any raised hand. No, Ibra Ibrahim. 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 No, okay. It was hidden. All right. Yes, Ibrahim, please. I think you're on mute. You're on mute, darling. 
Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello? Now we hear okay. You. Sorry. It was okay. Uh, actually, it's not a question I was saying. It's more a compliment, a supplement information to what my colleague, uh, my colleague Leo Skobic asked. Uh, the fact is, you know, we are in Bern. We uh, there was this question of pay cut. We didn't implement the pay cut, and after uh, last year, I think um, uh, it was clear that ICSC was the owner of the um, multiplier and so the index. So uh, we had to implement. <laughs> It was this general assembly said, okay, you implement or otherwise you are out well, of the UN system. Well, so we had to implement. And as we didn't apply the pay cut, we had all the, con the full consequences of, uh, of that. That's the reason why we, are, uh, we had a, a big, yeah, this, this, uh, this uh, reduction of, uh, of our salary. Thanks, thanks for that, Birahim, and thanks for reminding me, actually, um, because most of the agencies affected by that have actually got their headquarters here in Geneva. And those in Geneva had actually agreed with the ICSC that they will freeze until the, the next um, adjustment for inflation. And so they so far haven't, they're trying to reduce the impact on, on staff. So you won't get an increase or a decrease. And so they've been freezing it so far across all the other specialized agencies. So I'm very sorry, Birahim, that your organization decided not to follow that lead. That was a very bad, uh, very <laughs> bad judgment from the, from the UPU, I'm afraid. And I, I will I will address it with your 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 administration when we see them in February. Okay. Thanks, Birahim. Yes, so. Thank you, Tanya, for this uh, additional information. I um, don't see any more in uh, the raising hand. No more people, but um, I think we have. We have some in the chat. Yeah. Yes, Leonda, yeah. can you go with them, please? Yes. Uh, yeah, the first question was answered uh, in Andrea's presentation, and this was related to the percentage of post adjustment going down yeah. while yeah. inflation is going up. Um, yeah. And then we have another question from Benito Martinez Alicia. Uh, I'll read what she wrote. Yeah. It's a comment. Thank you for the presentation. I'm Alicia from EBRT. How are institutions classified into Group 1 and Group 2, please? Yeah. Andrea, do you want to answer? I don't you know how it's the answer. Um, I, do you want me to yeah. quickly just... Yeah. Just you very basically, it? it's headquarters, basically. Group one or headquarters duty stations. That's very basically the answer. Um, or those who are very close, like Bangkok, um, they're not actually a headquarters duty station, but they have so the, the relative meet the relative criteria. So they're very similar to a headquarters duty station. And everybody else basically is group two. So I think we've got seven, if not nine, um, group one duty stations, and then the rest of them are, are group two duty stations. I hope that helps. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the following question from uh, Maria Jesus Sanchez, uh, Bolivia. Uh, she's connected from Bolivia and um, Maria says our post adjustment is low compared to other countries, which does not represent uh, at all the cost of living as foreigners. We are charged higher prices for everything, particularly rent. This is obviously not reflected anywhere when you use market rent surveys. Um, this is also related to the calculation of post adjustment index. Yeah. So, Leolinda, can you repeat the question? I haven't, I have some noises when you were raising the question. Okay. So, uh, the cost adjustment is low compared to other countries, which does not represent at all the cost of living. As foreigners, uh, we are charged higher prices for everything, particularly rent. This is obviously not reflected anywhere when you use market rent. Surveys. Uh, okay, Tanya, you already raised your answer. You are muted. You are muted. No, you go ahead, Andrea. Sorry, please. Okay, for me, is, this one is uh, is something about uh, UN rule in terms of cost of living and and uh, operational rule for methodologies. In the UN system, there is outside of the cost of living survey that we are going to do it every uh, five years and every three years for the non HQ duty session. And that's outside of the CPI index. There are rules 
that are uh, still in place. Like there is a rule that is called the, the 10 points rule that if uh, in a country you are going to have uh, uh, a decrease in terms of purchase power that is uh, more than 10 percent, you can request a CSC to run a cost of living survey. Obviously, mm -hmm. you need to have you need to have the data if you want to back it up, if you want this information. Don't just go if you want to a CSC saying, I noticed that my cost adjustment go down, my purchase power will be reduced, and I want to have another cost of living survey. So somehow try to use the rule in your favor to defend your rights. So if you notice that the inflection is, it's, as you mentioned, is severe, and it's, it's uh, higher than the 10%, you have all the rule to ask for the 10 points rule to run a new cost of living survey in your duty station. And even uh, in this regard, see if you are going to trigger this one and it has been validated, uh, in the case you are going to have post adjustment that are giving are going even to lower it down the previous one, everything must be frozen until a new cost of living survey will be performed. Tanya, you want to say anything else? Um, no, I, I think you're quite right. I mean, if if there is, if you observe um, a, uh, a considerable reduction in your cost of, um, in your purchasing power, then you have to document that. And it has to go through the LSC, the Local Salary Committee. And they're the people who actually speak on your behalf. So it's very important that you um, are aware of you, who your LSC are, who's the chair, um, uh, is your organization represented or do you have a voice and input into that? And um, that would be very important. Sorry, I have in case you hear noise, it's the snow plow beside my window. Um, <laughs> um, so I hope that I hope that uh, that that uh, answers, I think, with what Andrea said. I have nothing more to add. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. OK. Um, yeah. Next question is from Dr. Singh, and it is similar to one of Dr. Uh, Vigilatello uh, from AFT. And this is related to duty stations that have one or two staff only. So the question is, uh, is th this is especially true for the Caribbean when the survey of cost of living comes out? It's usually applicable to the person who is currently in the post in that country, but it's very difficult for some if they were only recently posted to that country. So this was the case earlier this year. How do you factor this? Um, the suggestion is to include a more broader number of people to respond for the previous posting uh, they had if that was in the past one year itself. So it's it's more about the surveys. Can we include more people in the surveys uh, to have it for it to be more meaningful if the staff is only one person in the duty station? Um, in my experience, absolutely not. It's not possible. They, you know, you can only they can only serve uh, survey people who are actually serving in the duty station. Um, but it's a very good point you raised, Dr. Singh. Um, I presume that's the economic. Commission when the economic commissions is it ACC I'm not 100% sure yeah yeah um so yeah it, it's a very good point you make and maybe it's something we we need to raise with the ICSC but I I can almost hear their response in my head which would probably be um well we just need to get an average we don't need every individual response and it's just to get an indication etc 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 so um but yeah, the point, your point is well made, Dr. Singh, and, and let's see if we can work that into the, ne uh, the next time we discuss with the ICSC. Thank you for that. Mm, I don't see all the questions about from sharing, request yeah. to share the presentation. I have, uh, yeah, I've seen in the chat another question at the end, which is um, probably Andrea will cover. Thank is you. our base salary uh, based on the number of working hours? Mainly, this is the chapter. And this is uh, from, no. from, from, yeah, in which in, exactly? No. Yeah. Uh, our base salary is our base salary. It's not based yeah. in, uh, in hour. If you want in these regards, uh, it is really quite, quite simple. Professional salary, in theory, doesn't have uh, overtime. 
So normally these things are more managed within the organization. Normally every organization has some guideline on these regards, but uh, we cannot ask if you want at the same time if you want for over time is uh, so normally we should work. Uh, I think that every one of us is going to work, I think, around 40 hours. Obviously, if we will be required to work could be one Saturday or uh, to work more could be during the week and uh, you're going to get compensation. It's uh, it's really more according to the to the agency. I can give a sample. Uh, I can be wrong, but the wipe organization you know, there is they are using uh, they are working uh, one hour more. There is there are some staff that are taking uh, a working way that they are going to do one hour more per week, and uh, sorry, per, uh, one hour more per day per week. So every two weeks, instead to work ten days, they are going to work nine days because they are going to do the eight hour in the previous days. So in this regards, I'm really sorry that our base salary is not based in uh, working hours. Thank you, Andrea. I see further some two other questions, but one um, hand is raised by, again by uh, Mostovsky. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, sorry to take the floor once again. Another question about this um, uh, base salary and post adjustment structure. For instance, when General Assembly approves the increase uh, of base salary because uh, compared to increased as well. For instance, uh, this is done, they increase the base salary at the same time, they decrease the same amount from uh, post adjustment on no loss, no gain basis, right? Up to yeah, now. Is it true? Is it true? Okay. Time, to, time to time we get uh, somehow a sort of compensation in the sense that we get, uh, I don't know, 0 0.5% more in base salary and 0 0.5% less in post adjustment. So my, my question is basically when it happens, my salary doesn't change. I had 100, I received 100, just structure is changed. However, in the United States, where the post adjustment is one. So they increased salary, post adjustment didn't change. So the salary in the United States increased in real terms, while elsewhere it remained the same. And um, it depends. What you have to remember, if I might say, Yuri, is you. I'm, I'm, your name is Yuri, am I correct? Right, right, right. Yuri Yunuska. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Yuri. Um, Yes, you're quite correct. There is a no loss, pain, no loss, no gain basis for the base salary. However, remember what we're looking at is purchasing power. It doesn't matter what happens in your local duty station. What they're looking at is equity of purchasing power. So if it goes up in New York, the chances are, you know, it, it, it depends. It, it'll have to be compared with New York. So everything is about the base being in New York. So if the salary goes up in New York, um, then it is possible that your post adjustment will be brought down because your sal the salaries, um, ha your salary will go up, but your post adjustment will come down because all that they're looking at, they're not looking at what is the inflation in, in powers compared to other where that what they're looking at only is in the purchasing power equity across the board compared to New York. So this oh. is the whole basis of the professional salary is to ensure purchasing power parity with well, I, New York. I, I'm sorry, this increase in salary in comparators uh, scale, that has nothing to do with uh, inflation. They just decided in US government to increase for some reason, probably for inflation, probably because of any other reason, just to increase the salary. So that they, could be it. the United Nations staff in New York will be increased the same. Yes. 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 So yes. The, the, on, the, on the end, on the salary will go up. Where yes. Elsewhere, where elsewhere, the same salary will remain. So our salary elsewhere will, it will go remain. Up. No, Yuri, it'll remain. It, it, what it will like? A, it's purchasing parity. Don't. It's not the salary will go up and down. It's it if your base salary if it goes up, it goes up. But then there may be a decrease in the post adjustment exactly because there is no. Um, because there hasn't been the same increase in um, in uh, inflation or in the cost of living or whatever in your duty station to the same rate as New York. It's all compared back to New York. I hope that's I hope I'm clear with that, Yuri, because it's quite a key point to understand. 
Okay, you have to consider you have to consider that if the cost Sorry, every, sorry, everything, yeah. everything, if you want, is based, as Tanya was saying, in uh, purchasing power. So we can even, if you want, go to the extreme ratio, like uh, in uh, in US, if you want the federal service, we keep, if you want, the same salary. But could be that in UNESCO, if you want, the cost of living has increased. So even if the one, if you want, of New York has not increased, the year is going to increase. Because, again, the question here it is, Equal purchasing power. The salary that you are going to receive need to allow you to per to get and perform the same things, either if you are in Paris, either if you are in New York, either if you are in Geneva, either if you are in Rome. I would like also to highlight uh, still one benefit that could be many people are not really thinking is whenever you are going to have the no lose no gain in terms of base salary increase and uh, post adjustment decrease. Yes, we are going could be to get the same salary, but you also have to remember and you always have to remember that our pension is only based in base salary. So when we are going to have an increase of the base salary, somehow we are going to get the benefit that our pension is increasing. Mm. So it's uh, this one in a way, some, it's many people are not really thinking about it, but uh, differently than as many, many people know it, differently than the general service. Again, to equalize our pension, our pension is based on base salary. So there is still a hidden benefit when we are going to have this no lose, no gain of increasing the base salary and decreasing the post adjustment. Yeah, Andrea, I'm sorry, but this argument doesn't work for me because this is uh, apl this applies to everyone as well. As sorry, Yuri, Yuri, yeah. I, I I think um we're 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 about one minute away from the yeah. end of the meeting okay. of time okay. allocated. Okay. Do you okay. want to do you want to set a meeting and come back and 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 have a bit more discussion on that if it's really something that you haven't we haven't been able to explain clearly to you? I think that yeah. would be better. Um, otherwise, we're not. There are a couple of other little questions in the um, in in the chat. So, let, and and also we had a couple of questions from um, for, that were sent in pre prior to the meeting. We've seen. Yeah. I'll give the floor back to you. Thank you for your understanding, Yuri. Yeah, thank you. Just if I may add, just you have to be careful about the two component for the salaries is the base the base of the floor salary and the post adjustments and the factor parameter that impact each of them, and then you can have an idea about the, the, the influences on that. Um, so in the chat, I think this is the same trend of questions. And there is one question with regard to short term professional staff. Um, they are not entitled uh, education grant with regard to uh, with comparison to fixed term staff. Explanation for this, which. Um, I'm not too sure if you mean when you say short term and um, yeah. professional staff, are you talking about consultants or are you talking about short term staff? Because normally the benefits are in, and entitlements are applicable across as to all on a staff yes. contract. Yes, it's not, there is no precision I, I, here on what does it mean. I think it's, it's because of the length of the contract, maybe. Yeah. Hi, Pilar. You're, you're so... going to come in on that, Pilar? Do you want to put your microphone on? Thanks, Pilar. Uh, you are mu okay. muted. Yeah, now, sure. Sorry, Great. what's that? Right. Okay, Hi, yes, that maybe this is specifically for Pajo. They are uh, STPs, are staff, so they are considered staff, so they can enroll into the staff association and they have the benefits of the staff, but not all of them. And probably this is pertaining specifically to, to Pajo. It's different as in WHO. So, for instance, education grant is not provided to the, to the STP. But in any case, this is part of the benefits, is not part of the salary. We understand that this is yes. an Yes, we're talking about the salaries here, not the benefits exactly. and entitlements. And, and we can follow up with, with Oscar in, in another discussion internally. Yeah. But yeah, that, yeah, that was my comment. He's right, but we, we can discuss in that. It might be because the, the contract is like less than one year. And so therefore you it's can't- two have, years. It's, yeah, it's, it's something that we have internally in the, in the PAHO rules and regulation for the staff. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me worry. I'd like to discuss with that you more. On that one. Thank you. Pia. We'll be happy. I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For myself. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for the yeah, yeah. comments. And I think yeah, I agree with you. It's the same sense. Is that it depends on the organization. This this uh, that the person is belonging to. There are some internal uh, rules that they define this. And yeah. 
it shouldn't be the case, but yeah. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. If they are actually, if they don't mention them, report them, yeah, it's very difficult to follow on them. And it's a good four hour. We can raise all these um, um, questions or irregularities if if the, if, the, if any. Yeah. I think these are mainly the question here in the chat. I th I hope I don't miss it any. We have uh, some questions that we received by uh, writings and um, actually five questions, but there is one we were which, which was already uh, answered, which should get the, uh, the last question. Yeah, so mm -hmm. probably we can go through them uh, together for the first question. Um, the question. Me. Yeah, so um, I have a question. So normal. This is about individual special salaries, national and international consultant. Consultant, uh, what are the grades, classification, or standard uh, used to, to calculate their salaries? Actually, the consultant um, are not covered by uh, the UN system for um, the for the salary um, um, entitlement. They have a different uh, class, let's say, category classification based on the organization that uh, it's uh, higher in them. So there is, they don't follow the same way of uh, UN system classification in the grade and, uh, um, of course, uh, in the benefits or the salary entitlement. I don't know if you have any additional um, comment on that, uh, Tanya. No, just just that Andrea. this is what we're talking about is staff salaries and anything yeah. outside of that yeah. um, individual contractors. It's a very different system as we've seen yeah. clearly explained. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next question, okay. Andrea. The subsequent question is uh, related to uh, the, there is a question that is following the agenda. I would like to submit a question to the SSC cost of living survey for Paris. According to the SSC website, it seems like survey has not been completed in Paris for more than years, and it seems that there is, uh, there is not an upcoming one. And uh, there is also mention that the rising of uh, pricing and inflation in Paris. Me, I'm going to share this one. Because the side that is linked uh, that was given to us, at least that is in that question, seems that is not get updated. So in Paris, uh, seems that the and this one is uh, is the new, no, the new, con yes, the, new cost of, the new cost of living survey and the methodology that uh, it was done using the new one in uh, started in 2021 and finished in 2022 so accordingly with the i can share later if you want the link so accordingly with the icsc the cost of living survey has been performed uh, in paris in uh, 2021 and uh, the new post adjustment was established from the 1st august 2022 so it's not correct the fact that it, there was not the cost of living survey in the past and uh, there was not if you want anything planned for the future considering that uh, the cost of living survey was has been performed in 2021 it means that a new cost of living survey should be performed around 2026 yeah. to go back to the the specific specific specificity of the question as the, in addition of the cost of living survey as me and Tanya already have already mentioned on uh, every 12 candelar months and normally is in January there is perform is performed a CPI price index to understand the the pricing change in terms of inflection and in the case that uh, what is mentioned here uh, there is a, dis a discrepancy from the one of 2022 to the one of 2023 the new CPI should be applied and uh, if the difference it is that the price have been increased, that you should have an increase in terms of salary. Thank you. I hope I answered the question. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we'll just go very quickly. The next one. Um, please address reasons why there are different UN agencies have different salaries, but for the same grade and step. That should normally um, not happen in the same duty station. In the same duty station, it is exactly the same um, salary for grade and step. What you might be looking at is your pay slip. What you might be seeing is a difference in the pay slip. So if you're 
a P3 with two, ch two dependent children and a dependent spouse, for example, and you're comparing it with a colleague who does not have any dependents, then obviously your salary will. You might What you might be looking at is a calculation including your benefits and entitlements. So um, there shouldn't be a reason for that. If uh, when you go back and compare your salary slips again, um, you do find that there is um, a, a difference, please come back and let us know because there shouldn't be. Not on your base salary. Your base salary should be the same. Um, and uh, clarify if local staff has, have a spouse, spouse allowance. Um, it'll depend on the duty station. If, uh, if for locally, locally recruited staff, that's general service and national professional officers, um, normally uh, it, it depends on the local custom because what you're comparing with is the cost of labour in the duty station. So if the local uh, tradition is to have a spousal allowance, then um, the, the local uh, staff will get a spousal allowance. But that really is a, 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 a duty station specific question. And please don't compare between P and D professional GS. It's two totally, totally, totally different systems. Thank you, Tanya. The last question, I guess. Oh, the the um, staff yeah. assessment. Yeah, I, I thank you. This was from our colleague Kim in um, FAO in Rome. So Kim, if you're online, I hope um, I've got your question correct. I think what you're asking is about is the staff assessment. Um, and we've been um, We've been suggesting for a long time. I come from UNAIDS and your our UNAIDS salary slips are like WHO. They do not even mention the staff assessment because staff assessment doesn't come into the it doesn't actually come into the calculation. Um, it is to show that if you were paying taxes. That in in the duty station, that would be 25 percent off, but actually it doesn't follow into that's nothing to do with your base salary or anything else. That's a whole that's for the what we call the tax equalization fund. The tax equalization fund is held at New York. Um, and in theory, what happens is the uh, the any staff assessment is it's only notional. That money never actually exists anywhere. That, that money never actually passes hands anywhere. Um, so it's to show that if uh, for example, Ireland, I'm an Irish national, that the staff assessment for all Irish professional salary, professional staff will be deducted from the Jews of Ireland to the United Nations, for example. But it's a purely notional and it's purely academic um, exercise. It was put in back in the 1950s to um, when there was a massive debate about who pays taxes and who gains from the taxes. Um, of, of international civil servants. And that's why they put in the staff assessment notion. And more and more in the specialised agencies, they don't even show that. We don't see our staff assessment. Like Andrea hadn't seen, had never seen staff assessment on his uh, pay, pay slip ever. And I only know about it because I've been in different, um, well, I know about it because I, I hear it spoken about, but I also knew about it as staff member because I've been in different agencies over the past 30 years. So um, I see it occasionally in different areas. I hope that explains. Um, but it's not you're not losing 25 percent of your salary of that. I can one million percent assure you. I hope that helps. Thank you very much, Tanya. Um, now, since time is running, um, as was already requested by one of the participants, the presentation will be shared with everyone to have their time to assess, uh, to, to digest it uh, slowly, slowly. And um, if there are no more comments Actually, from, yeah, Tanya. On, or... on, the, on, the, on, this, on the slides, the presentation will, is on the FIXA website. It'll be put on the FIXA website. So we're not Thank actually you. going to send it. The link will all be on the FIXA website. And there's a link to a very similar presentation that was done by Andrea and Nina last year on exactly the same topic. So yeah. you can Thank watch them all and, and, and see what, how it's helpful it is to you. Thank you. So I will remove the wheel, but it, it is. It is shared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sentence. Yeah, thank you, Tanya. Um, and then I don't know, uh, Andrea, uh, do you have any additional comment or if there is any final comment probably quickly from the participant before closing the session because you are running out of time? Um, there is. Um, there is one. One Jalil. Yeah, yeah, yes. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> 
You're on mute, my friend. I think that uh, are the headset no. that are muted. Uh, not could be the Microsoft Teams. Check your headset. Uh, because in Teams you are not muted. Now you are now you are muted. You are muted. OK, you're unmuted. No, we can't hear you, Jalil. So sorry. I'd love to hear your <laughs> voice. We never get to hear it from you. OK. In, in any case, Jalil, this one is for you and for everyone else. If you have any question that you would like to get answered, feel free to leave the question in the chat or still feel free to send the question through FIXA or if you want directly, if you want to the PSA standing committee and we are going to come back to you and answer it. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, clear. Thank you very much. So at this point, we reached the end of this presentation. Thank you, Tanya again and uh, Andrea. Uh, for this uh, very useful presentation, as you can see through the interaction. And uh, yeah, I would like to thank also all participants who were um, who joined us. And if there's any follow up uh, question or comment, uh, yeah, they can address it through the FIXA uh, um, um, website. Thank you all and uh, have a nice uh, end of afternoon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.